So Megan, yes. we're in the middle of a drought. What's it like working in California? <laughs> wow, surprisingly, uh, we're flooded. No, actually, um, we have a really great location because everything's all together and it makes shooting really fun because you don't have to travel distances and it's all right there and you feel really a part of it. The only problem is, is when they start getting flooded and uh, we've got that problem. I mean, it's thank God for the rain, but uh, just stop for just a couple days, please, and come back later. I, don't know, I feel like a hypocrite. Great, yeah. Is that the noise we hear right now? Yeah, that's the rain. It's a lovely sound, isn't it? Okay, where are we shooting here? Do you know what this used to be? Yes, we're shooting downtown LA and it's called the Bingo Building. And it used to be no brewery, but it's empty now, very empty. Great. Except for the few pigeons mm -hmm. that fly around on the top. Great. Okay, you've had a lot of roles working for Full Moon. What's it yeah. like being a hero now? It's kind of nice. I've grown to like it a lot, actually. Um, the thing about being a hero is that you have a lot of expectation on you. I mean, you, you, have, you have to be the good guy. And sometimes it's more interesting to be the bad guy. But I'm beginning to find that Alex, in particular, has a lot going on. Mm -hmm. uh, not over here. What, what's your favorite thing about being a hero? My favorite thing about being a hero. You can say that. Is that everybody gets. You can answer it. Yeah. You don't have to whisper yourself. Okay. My favorite thing about being a hero is that I get the applause at the end. No. Um, it's nice. What's nice about Arcade is that Alex is the unexpected hero. It's the last person you would think to save the day because she's got a lot of problems and she has to come to a lot of realizations in herself. She's very timid and shy and very messed up after her mother's suicide. So not only does she have to overcome these fears and this guilt she has built up in her, but she has to also save all her friends from this vicious monster, this machine that's, that's taking over. What's the machine? Well, ar arcade is a new type of game and it's based on virtual reality. So when you enter the game, you're consumed it's almost like a casket. And there's an eyepiece that comes up to your eyes, and there are two cyber gloves which enable you to touch this reality, to actually pick things up in this other world. And you have a joystick that can move you through the lands. And it's there are eight lands in all, and it's a journey across these lands to find the heart of this game. I won't tell you any more. What are the different levels? Oh, well, there's, there's one level in a volcano where we have to go down the slopes of the volcano. Um, there's another level where we have to cross a river. We have to choose between, there are two people we have to choose from, the liar and the truth teller, and figure out who it is, and cross the river and go to the city of truth. Um, there's another level where we're in a motorcycle and we're going through tunnels and there are death, death riders who actually pursue you and you have to avoid them. There's a few others, but I'll let those be. Are you riding a motorcycle? Yes. Yes. Do you really ride through, a motorcycle through, through in this film? the magic of film. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, uh, the best level, the scariest level, is level eight. Because what's unique, what's even more unique about arcade is that it reacts to the individual. It changes according to each person. And level eight is the mystery level. Nobody knows what it is. Mm. And I'll tell you a secret, it uh, goes into your past. Mm. And what you're most afraid of, it'll bring out. It'll make you face your deepest, darkest fears. Is that your favorite level? One well, of my favorite. It's mm -hmm. the scariest. It's the most interesting. What's your favorite level? I guess if I had to pick a level I liked, it's probably the journey across the water. I think it's the most interesting because it's a calm level. There's, there's no running. It's a slow row across the river and something's happened to Alex in that level that she doesn't expect. How did they shoot that? Well, we're using a blue screen. Um, they'll be going in and they'll be actually covering this in, I think, a location in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we'll be wearing our, because we have different suits. When we're in the game, we have our own um, black combat suit with a helmet. And they'll, they'll put the screen in the background. And the computer animation is amazing. I, I don't even understand it. It's so advanced. They will go in and take several, they'll take a video, we'll shoot it on video, they'll put the screen in the back, they'll, put, they'll fill the back with the location, and then they'll add effects. Because this isn't reality, it's virtual reality. So things are just a little off. It's not 
quite real. And that's what makes it scary. If you think you're there, but are you there, are you not there, it keeps you on your seat. Albert Pugh and I have a, a lot in common. We both come from Hawaii. And it was just so interesting because we actually crossed paths in, the ba in, the pa in our past and had no idea. When I was eight running around, he was working in the same building as my parents. So, you know, this was destined. And it's nice because I understand his way of thinking because it's my way of thinking. We had the same upbringing and Hawaii is a little laid back, I guess you could say. And it makes it real comfortable. It's really nice to work with Albert. What was the best part about going back to Hawaii? Well, I don't go back to Hawaii. Should I pretend? No, <laughs> they go back to Hawaii and I don't get to go. <laughs> I'm serious. No, because they're going to be they're going to be filling it with a blue screen. So Albert and his crew gets to go, and the actors don't get to go. But to tell you the truth, the stuff that that they're going to be shooting in Hawaii is very dangerous, high action stunts that they're going to need to double for. It's not in my contract. Right. <laughs> Can you tell me about uh, your co-star? Peter Billingsley. Peter's great. We're having a lot of fun. We have a lot to play off of. We, um, he's a very talented actor, and it's a pleasure to work with someone who really comes in as professional and knows his character. And, and we've created a really nice relationship, I think, that plays well. It's, it's a little different. It makes it a little more interesting. It's not a typical, you know, I'm not, he's not my boyfriend, and... So there's a little bit of a tension there and why he actually helps me because I have this crazy idea that this game is alive. Nobody believes me and he's the only one that believes me and we're having a lot of fun so far. Except for the flooding. <laughs> we're having a good time, yeah. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the scene that you're filming right now? This is the scene, it's the end of the movie. Uh, well actually, no it's not. The scene, that, the scene that we just shot right now is where we actually confront Arcade. We know what it is, we've got the hints, and we're going to go in to save our friends. And at first, Nick doesn't want Alex to go because I'm not very good at these games. Um, I'm not a very tough person. And there's no choice for me to go because I have to save Greg, I have to save my boyfriend. So it's, it's really the start of the real adventure because this is where the, the I mean, this is life and death now. Who drives it? <laughs> well, actually, that's the thing is we're both involved in the game. We're both fully, our whole body is inside the game. So we control ourselves, which is fortunate because in, in what, what you'll see is that one of us will go to the end. Who's the bad guy? Well, the bad guys are arcade. They, it's an experimental game. It hasn't been fully tested out. And in fact, that's what's happening. Is we're the guinea pigs for this new game. And it turns out what they modeled it after, they shouldn't have. It's a little off and doesn't fit what they thought. And uh, I'm not going to tell you because it'll spoil it. Are there any other cast members that I'd be interested in? Sharon... Um, let's see, who? Lauren? Sharon Farrell. Sharon Farrell is my mother. Um, wonderful. She's got a, you know, a very significant role in this film. Um, Seth Green is another actor who's in it, and he plays one of our gang. I don't know. What's it? Okay, both, both you and Albert came from yeah. Hawaii. What's it like working with you? Working with Albert? Well, like I say, we have the same disposition. We both come from this, you know, lackadaisical upbringing. So you always feel like you always feel like you're you're eased into a performance. It, it says real calm, but we get a lot of work done, which is important. It, we don't we're not wasting any time. We have two minutes. A minute. Okay. What makes him unique? As a director, style looks different from Charlie. You know? Albert Pugh is a very dynamic director. He's he has a, a vision for each of his films, and particularly Arcade has a look and a distinction all of its own. So it's nice to be, feel a part of something that's that's going to be unique and different. 
Okay. I can come back and do more. I'm sorry. We just we just shot a scene where we were in solid smoke for the whole scene, so my lungs are a little congested. No. Okay. But you know, it gets you into the moment, and you really feel like you're you're making a movie. But after about four hours, it starts to weigh down heavy on you. It is a movie about a dangerous video game. Yes. You think video games are dangerous? I wouldn't say that. I, 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 I wouldn't say that video games are dangerous. Um, I think it brings up the point that when you put your faith or... or you, it can be addicting. If you, if you let it into your life, it can be a vice. I think just like anything else, I, you know, anything can be a vice from eating to drugs, you know. Um, I think this movie really talks about confronting your own feelings and confronting your own fears and coming to terms with them and and not letting another force control you something as trivial as a game you know because um, it's really about Alex's confrontation with herself and it just so happens this evil video game has made her do it and what the game actually is is about the whole destruction of the game the reason the game is so evil is it's not set up properly it's it's a little off, you know, and in itself, the game has to do that itself. The, uh, the game is trying to um, make its own confrontation on its own, and it's just, it's a negative confrontation instead of a positive one. Do you think there's a positive side to video games? <sighs> I think anything that's entertaining is positive. I, I think that humans need a diversion, something to take them that take themselves out of their reality, something to bring pleasure and joy to their lives, whether it's throwing a football or a Nintendo game. Um, but you have to be careful if how important they become to you. If you can't deal with people and you can only deal with a game, I think that's when life gets a little scary when you don't know how to relate to people in reality. Did you, did you want to ask me about why arcade is different from any other video game? Ask why is arcade different from any other video game? Well, the reason that arcade is so unique is it deals with um, in a virtual reality is the technical term. It's a whole new breakthrough in computer technology where you actually enter the screen. Even though you're standing here and your hand is moving like this, if you have the equipment on you, you're actually reaching out for something. Say it's a can of soda. You're picking up the can of soda and pouring it, even though there's nothing there. And so it's the most brilliant, amazing technology that's very advanced. And it brings you beyond, it brings you into another reality. That's it? That's it? All right, cool. Big brother. Big, big brother. Okay, Megan, what's the best thing about working on this movie? Um, the best thing about working on this movie is that it, you feel like you're part of a family. You know, everyone's real close, and the lighting's really good, and um, all the electrical wait, stuff. Wait, let's do it again. Get it in quick. When he says that, just keep on Ready? What's the best thing about working on this movie? The best thing about working on this movie is you really feel like it's part of you're part of a family. Everyone is really close, and and you get to know everyone. And like, hey, hey, you're family. Actually, right. this is my brother Eric, and he's best boy like this. Hey, you gotta get right behind me. Right, right here. here. Best thing about this movie is you. Uh, the, <laughs> the best thing about this movie is you feel like you're part of a family. Everyone's really close, and they treat you like they're your brothers. <laughs> okay. Hey, did, did you hear me? Did you get the cue? What's my cue? This is my brother Eric. Hi, how are you? And so it is. Movie. It's a. Hmm? What's he I'm, doing here? I'm the best boy electrician. So I do all the cable and light it, all the, all the cabling and. All, all that power cabling and. All, and that, all that kind of stuff. Is it making always this difficult or is it only here? Oh, yeah. This, <laughs> <laughs> she's the best. Oh, come on now. The tell the truth. Yeah. Good stuff. Anyway, get back to your interview, okay? <laughs> You're the star. Thanks, Eric.
working with your family. <laughs> okay.